Hey guys, welcome back to When the Lights Go Out. My name is Cody Ryan, and today we're going to be building a primitive shelter using modern methods and means. So let's check it out and see how it goes. Come on. While walking through the woods, you should always be mindful of a few things. So, the sun, or how much usable light do you have left? Fire, food, shelter, water should always be on the forefront of your mind. So, don't just look at your feet or the trail. Try and scan the environment and look for things. So, here we got up off the ground, nice and dry. Here's some tinder. So, here's fire. I just keep my little roly poly maxpedition pouch. Keeps it out of the way, pretty low profile until you need it. Up here I see some pine cones. This is a good fire starter, kindling. I also see some dead standing trees, so that'll help us with shelter. So we have fire, shelter, and you would have never seen that if you were looking down at your boots. So be mindful, surroundings. Survival tip, don't hoard your water. If you ration your water, you might find yourself dehydrated faster than you think and in a worse situation than when you first started. So I found my location for the night. Usually uh, you want a little bit elevated since where I'm at floods, but are going to build an elevated shelter because you never want to sleep on the ground where I live. So we're going to do an elevated platform. There's a little bit of a slope, so the runoff is going to go away from the shelter so you're not stepping in mud. Um, I see some dead standing trees, so that'll be easy to collect. Don't cut down live ones if you don't need to, if you're not in a survival situation. So we're going to set up here and then we'll show you the final product. So I'm trying out the new Kestrel. Osprey pack, 38 liters, and I'll show you what we have for our excursion today. So, right off the bat, on the outside, this is a Crazy Creek chair. I'm sure you've seen these before. They stopped making them in this color, and I'm not sure why. They kind of just pulled out. They also have a little bit of padding and insulation in it, so you could use this as like a makeshift uh, sleeping pad, torso length, but I'm going to keep it for my gear, keep it nice and dry and off the muddy ground. So tools of the trade for today, we have CRKT axe, this is the Nobo. Opposite side, we have the Gomboy Silky Saw. The top lid, I uh, just have an extra knife, but here's gonna be all the paracord, so we don't have to make our own cordage. Like I said, this will be a primitive shelter with modern means. pack itself it's um just a top load design however it does have this side access pocket there's a little pad here's extra water with nesting cups so i can boil water Here is, I think it's a 13 by 9 battle box tarp with all necessary cordage to hang it. 
This is gonna be our bedding shelter tonight, and I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. Ultra lightweight, couple ounces. So the whole point of doing this kind of shelter um, is to minimize the weight. So if you wanna go ultra light, but still be able to build a pretty robust shelter, that's kind of what this video is in, encapsulating. So here's extra uh, wind shell. And just a backcountry med kit. It's fine. And the bottom here. I keep my hammock. That's just obviously lounging around, but that's not the point of this video. So we won't be using that today. So this is the Kestrel 38, like I said, and it's pretty roomy and actually pretty comfortable pack. I'm liking it so far. So today we're going to be using these. So I got the saw. I'm going to use the ax. Take the time to go ahead and put it in your pocket. I'm notorious for this and for getting it out here. So as said in the torch video the saw use the full real estate you're not doing short tiny strokes because you're just gonna wear yourself out spider so let the saw teeth do the work halfway through here we go there's one tree we're gonna need at least two of these trees because we're already making two TPs. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So the quick tidbit, I always get asked the importance of a multi-tool. Why do you bring one? So it's a good woodsman tool, but while hiking through, my knife sheath got loose. So I always keep this is the Leatherman Surge, and it's not so much a for wood as it is to fix the gear that you have on you. If you've never screwed in the woods, I suggest trying it. Now we have two trees cut. All I'm gonna do is make them equal length, and then I'm gonna cut it into thirds. So, this is gonna be three equal sections and three, which gives us six. And size-wise, so the bigger you make these, the taller your shelter can be raised off of the ground. So I'm gonna true these up and then I'll show you the finished product. Survival tip when sawing. So if you're sawing through wood flat, you're gonna get to a point where it starts to pinch because gravity, as you saw, is pushing inwards and pinching off the blade, not allowing it, to, it won't move. So, little tip for you, take it, cross it over another piece, and let gravity, instead of pinching it, fall to the wayside, and kinda of see. See how it falls? It just opens it up for you and you won't get that pinching. So here you can see, I got it in those three equal lengths, movie magic. So here's gonna be, we're gonna make teepees, basically tripods. So one and two, I got a smaller section in the middle just cause I didn't end up cutting it exactly right, but that's all right. Got the paracord here. We're not gonna need a lot. So what I'm gonna do is just half this. And then I'm going to tie a clove hitch. You can do all these crazy lashings if you want, but I'm just here for down and dirty, quick and simple. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these three logs, 
prop them up to make it easier on myself. And you'll see why here in a second. And I'm going to tie a clove hitch loop. And then opposite the loop you just made, put them both together. I tied a clove hitch on one end. And then I'm going to kind of weave under and over, which is by definition weaving. Okay, so I did that three times. And you can see that there's a bit of a gap. I'm gonna go ahead and just finish off this knot with a half hitch. So now what we're gonna do is take this middle branch and simply like a windsless knot, kind of like tying a tourniquet, you're gonna flip it over to the opposite side. Then we're gonna take it Lift it. And fix it into a tripod base. So here we have one tripod built. Here, I'm just gonna repeat the process. Middle. And then we're gonna go up. If you find that you didn't tie your knots quite tight enough and it's kind of loose and all over the place uh, when you erect the uh, TP here, you can go ahead and repeat that process another time. So you fold it over, go ahead and go through and fold it over again, and you're kind of self wrapping it and you're going to tighten in all those edges the more that you do it. So there's just a little word of advice. Now we're on the lookout for two saplings that are as straight as possible without too many knots or anything because we're gonna to wanna to smooth it out. And I'll show you that here. So here's just the top of the tree that we cut. Here's where our ax tomahawk comes into play. We're just gonna smooth out all these branches. We don't want any knots. Now that you have your two poles delimbed, I'm going to show you what we brought for a cot. So this right here is just a piece of ripstop nylon and I sewed down the middle to make it one long tube. So just one continuous loop. Now if you didn't have this or didn't know how to sew, then Obviously, you could substitute with more branches. It's not going to be as comfortable as something like this, but I just want to highlight how easy, lightweight, and simple something like this to bring along. Like, there's no reason not to pack that even in your cargo pocket. So, something simple like this can turn the tides of a situation like this. So now, Go ahead and feed it through. And we're basically making a stretcher. The reason we smoothed it out is so that you're not ripping your rib stop nylon. So now that we have our stretcher, Sit on it. It's going to crunch the legs in tighter. This crunch into the ground, and it just makes it more stable for when you put on it. So we'll go ahead and give this a shot. There's bed for the night. Now we're going to set up in case it rains. We're going to do a tarp. You can do the same thing with uh, palm frond note about this shelter warm weather if you want to make it it's a colder night you can it's hollow on the inside so you can stuff it with pine boughs to make an insulated mattress and it's, it's more cozy than my mattress at home so this is definitely the go-to shelter now that we've got camp looking a little more cozy we're gonna go ahead and put the shelter up meaning the roof that kind of makes it a shelter 
So here it is. I just keep it in stuff sacks. I'm a huge fan of stuff sacks because I hate holding things. So this is quick and easy. So right off the bat is my ridge line. One end of the ridge line is just a hook. So we're gonna wrap this around the tree and hook it to itself. Now the opposite end has these, I believe they're made by uh, Ready Man. And I don't know if they're made out of titanium or what, but they're super lightweight and it's kind of like a boat cleat. Basically eliminates the need for tying knots. Now, inside, Again, you can look this up on the internet. I'll tie them pretty easy. Had a tree here. Might as well use it. That way we can get some lift. So, slippery half hitch. Again, look up all these knots. If you so choose to go to the ground, just have toggles attached. This is not in storm mode. It's hot out right now, so I added lifted extremely high for better airflow. When planning your shelters, um, pay attention to the wind direction so that you can uh, cool out your shelter and then your smoke can blow out of the shelter as well. Storm mode, obviously, all you need to do, lower the tarp, bees touch the ground, then you'll be impervious from the elements on at least two sides. So there we have it guys, a when the lights go out field expedient base camp. So again, you can substitute everything that's man-made for natural materials. It's gonna take a lot longer. Something like this took about three hours to do. It can still be done a lot shorter. I'm trying to film out here and do a lot of things. So point being, just keep an eye on the light. So roughly about three hours to an erect in a shelter like this. So some of the benefits of a shelter like this, it's portable. You can't take it in a backpack, obviously, but if you need to make micro adjustments, all you need to do is move those little tripods the bed, everything's fairly lightweight. It's not lashed down to a tree, so it's mobile. Uh, tarp like this, as large as it, is, as it is, huge advantage when in wet weather because you can have your fire and your kit all under a dry storage space. Now, saying that with the wet weather, it tends to pool the water and it gets super heavy, so you're gonna wanna take at least one, let some slack and point it towards the ground so that it has a runoff point. Again, in doing so, now you have a rain catchment system and you have fresh water for the morning. Now it's time to make a little fire, cook up some dinner. But for right now, I uh, just wanna enjoy this cozy little mattress that we made. So guys, this has been a When the Lights Go Out base camp. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. I appreciate all your guys' support. You guys have been awesome. And we're growing steadily, so please keep commenting down below. Let me know what you want to keep seeing, and I'll be sure to get those videos out as soon as possible. You guys are awesome. I'll catch you guys next time on When the Lights Go Out. Take care, guys. We don't go